the award presenting ceremony. Thank you very much. Welcome to this wonderful room in Tabacalera, San Sebastian. Welcome to you all, those of you who are here physically and those of you who are there listening to us in streaming. We're broadcasting in three languages. Welcome to you all. The future is in the cities. Mobility is largely responsible for that future. The data on CO2 emissions are very concerning. Time is running out and time is ticking. It's still ticking. We can still make a difference. It is a matter of will, just a matter of will. Today, we've come to take firm steps to implement solutions. An entire territory has come together to make Ibuthqua and the Basque Country a global center of excellence, international excellence with regards to sustainable mobility. This is a dense, multidisciplinary network. It needs to be fed with new ideas, and this is why these uh, awards have been created. We're going to meet the six finalists. They're all here, and then we're going to be knowing who are the two winners. The panel met this morning to make that decision, but before I uh, move on, I want to give the floor to the director of the Mobile Foundation, who represents that network. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to Anne Insausti. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon to you all. Thank you, Deputy General, authorities. Thanks for being here today. Thank you very much to you all for being here. Following us today by streaming. Allow me to go back to 2010. For professional reasons, I was in Shanghai then. And I had the opportunity to visit the expo, the exhibition there. I was deciding what to visit when a bus very silently went by. That was my first contact with sustainable mobility. I have to say that currently you don't need to go to Shanghai to have that experience. Very close to us, we've got companies like CAF and Irita that manufacture 100% electrical buses and trains. Every day we've got new contracts that they win and get, like for instance, Erizar in Paris and CAF Solaris in Barcelona. So these are just two of the many examples of companies in the Basque Country who've been working on mobility, sustainable mobility for years. You've been committed to it for a number of years now. You've been committed to sustainable development. And it's good that this is so. Alok Sharma, current uh, president and chairman of COP26, and I quote, said, for global warning not to go beyond 1.5 degrees, we need to reduce and cut down CO2 emissions by 50%. He's an optimist himself. He's very optimistic. We need to generate jobs. We need economic development as well, but without harming the planet. We need a transformation to occur. That is essential. It is a must. And if there's an essential field for that transformation to occur, that's mobility. It's clear that transformation is paramount. This is what we're working for. And in the field of mobility, this is something that's very, very necessary right now. This is why we're here today. We want to support in that transformation, in that step in that process towards uh, sustainable mobility. In 2018, 30% of CO2 emissions in Europe were due to transport. Out of 30%, 70% were due to uh, transport, land transport. So by mid-July, the EU put on the table a new uh, battery of measures. If we want to guarantee that we can uh, reach zero emissions by 2050, we need to be able to be more demanding and reduce emissions by 50% uh, in 2020, sorry, 2030. So the measures that were put on the table are aimed at three different objectives. Of course, sustainable, su sustainable mobility, 
environmental sustainability, but also an increase in the offer so that users, citizens, can have access to electric vehicles that are more affordable. And the third objective and clear one is to foster innovation in technologies related to zero emissions so that this way we can become more and more leaders in Europe and create jobs. And those are the three main objectives. Those are mobile, uh, mobile's objectives. We are 100% aligned with the EU here. And in the framework of the project Etorki Suna Eiraikis from the provincial government of Gipuzkoa, we want to become a reference for sustainable mobility in Gipuzkoa. Many of you know the origins of the Mobile Mobility Awards, but some of you may not be familiar with them. We were created back in 2017. Some workshops were carried out, organized by public administration, so that many of the companies that are here today, that are competitors among them, can have a common strategy that will help us become a reference for sustainable mobility. Mobile was uh, created on the basis of uh, partnership. It is at the core of what we do. It is clear to all of us that partnership is absolutely fundamental. In 2019, the foundation was created, and in 2021, in February, we opened the new facilities of Mobile in Tolosa that uh, have more than 2,000 square meters. Over these years, we have been um, working on Mobile's ecosystem. Now we have more than 50 companies, different sizes, uh, mid uh, companies, small companies, more than 20 stakeholders, training centers, universities, research centers, public administrations, associations, clusters, etc., etc. And we're here today in order to feed um, that um, ecosystem with new ideas and projects. We need to come up with a stronger ecosystem, and it is essential for us in order to do so to have new projects, of course. This is the first edition of the Mobile Mobility Awards. 28 projects were submitted. I need to thank you all. Out of those 28 projects, six were shortlisted as finalists. They're all here. Out of them, we have two related to electrical mobility, two related to infrastructure, one project related to connectivity, and the last one related to autonomous vehicles. Out of those six finalists, there will be two winners today. They will be integrated in the mobile ecosystem. We're going to be fostering and supporting them in their development. These two projects will be ours, and they will be supported and developed uh, in so far as possible. We will provide new ideas. This is our way to make a better ecosystem, a stronger one, on the basis of partnership. So we've got technology that's proven, but there are other countries that do have technology as well. But what makes a difference for us is that partnership. What's bigger? What's smaller? What is the highest level, the lowest level? Well, if you and we join forces, we will join forces for the present and the future. We'll be bigger that way. That is our strong point. Together, we will make it. Thank you so much to you all. Entramos. Fine, thank you very much. Let's now move on to the awards. Let me remind you that the COFA project was launched from June 21 to July 29. There were uh, five category categories, connected mobility, autonomous mobility, shared mobility, electric mobility, and related infrastructures. We, the call was open to any national and international entrepreneur or group of entrepreneurs. Recently created and small companies already established on national and international territory, both national and international technology centers and universities. 
We received uh, 28 projects, 13 are from the Basque Country, 5 from Madrid, 4 from Catalonia, from, 4 from the uh, Comunidad Valenciana, and 2 international projects, 1 from France and 1 from Germany. These projects are distributed in all categories, especially electric, shed, and infrastructures. We have a wonderful panel that concentrate expertise, love to this land, uh, and commitment to social innovation. We've had, as I said, a wonderful, wonderful panel. We're very proud of uh, them, of the team they've made, and of all the knowledge they have. Let me now introduce them to you. Maria Luisa Arriola, Managing Director at BIC, Gipuzkoa, a public entity owned 50% by the Basque government and 50% by the Gipuzkoa Provincial Council, co-working and incubator, the organization by means of which the local government articulates its uh, strategy on entrepreneurship. Javier Hernandez, Director Director for Business Development and M&A and at uh, Littlefuse, American multinational company listed on the NASDAQ stock exchange based in Chicago, uh, electronic-based manufacturers. He's professor of entrepreneurship at uh, IESE Business School and founding partner at Alfield Strategic Consulting Firm. Mikel Lassa, managing director at EIT in Energy Iberia that has founding from the EU and promotes the energy transition by investing in innovation and entrepreneurship. Joaquin Lopetegui, Head of Corporate, Corporate Development and New Business at CAF, Train and Bus Manufacturer. Ignacio Martin, Director at Repsol, Banco a Banca, Indra Sistemas and Acerinox. Virginia Oregui, Manager at Gedoa, a nonprofit making organization fostered by both uh, entrepreneurs and trade unions that invest responsibly in sustainable companies and newly created companies. And finally, Imanol Rego, General Director of Irizar E-Mobility Electric Bus Manufacturer. I see you're all there. Thank you so much for your work. Amen. Thank you for coming and thank you. You all for being here, members of the audience. Congratulations on your work. We're now going to be looking at the six finalists. They're all ready. They all have their mics on. We've asked them to summarize in one minute what uh, they have done, the 20-page long uh, report they submitted. That's going to be a challenge. I will leave them some room here up on the stage. Vamos a empezar con el... The first finalist is based on magnets. And we're going to invite here a Chilean engineer who came to Spain to carry out his doctorate studies and luckily decided to stay in Guipúzcoa. I'm talking about Kenny Alvarez and his project Echo Magnet. The floor is all yours. Gracias, Antonella. Thank you, Antonella. A permanent magnet is key for electric engines to work. Currently, magnets are made in China by uh, p extracting a mineral belonging to rare earths, niodine. We've designed a system which will enable us to recover wasted magnets. We're going to be um, making a dust of discarded magnets that will be sold to engine manufacturers so that they can manufacture their own permanent uh, magnets. The advantage of uh, powder is that it's going to be manufactured in the Basque Country in a process that's non-polluting. It has low production costs. And finally, this powder will be recycled 
um, from uh, wastes that is currently non-recoverable. So we're moving on to a circular economy. Where do the magnets come from? Where do you get them from? Well, this permanent magnet will come mainly from all types of electric uh, engines and generators that uh, have been wasted or magnets that have been discarded for a number of different reasons. Where are you going to manufacture them? Well, the idea is to make them in the Basque Country, precisely in uh, Gipuzkoa, in about two years' time. And where are you in this process, in this production process? Well, so far, we've finished uh, developing the technology and we are now uh, es escalating this pre-industrially to increase the processed material and see what problems we may be facing in the future. Thank you very much, Kenny. Thanks. A warm round of applause for him. Let's move on to the second finalist. We're going to be talking now about a um, 100% uh, electric motorcycle. It's not a, a, an ordinary motorcycle. It's, it's um, developed by Valeria Valverde, a Costa Rican who traveled around the world and who finally established herself in Bilbao with a couple of partners. Valeria Valverde, the floor is all yours. Thank you very much, Antonella. Well, we started this uh, Ox Motorcycles, uh, where we design electric, smart, and connected motorcycles that are very easily charged. They have a battery that you can plug in in any uh, switch, as if it were a mobile phone. And it has some sensors to it that enable us to send uh, alerts in real time concerning the situation of the motorcycle and a possible accident. So we combine state-of-the-art technology with a unique design. This is not a scooter. This sophisticated um, design that was used back in the 60s is used here. Ox is an old motorcycle that uses state-of-the-art technology. It's made in Spain. More than 80% of the components come from Spain, and this is why we are ready to deliver more than 200 people that uh, customers that are already in the waiting list uh, we're going to be delivering their motorcycles uh, this very same month well and how how are you going to be selling online or are you going to have a network well we have both possibilities we have the website on the one hand, and our idea is to be uh, as present as possible. We've got the uh, a club uh, of distributors, a whole network. So after all the deliveries in October are covered for, what will you be doing? Well, we're going to be concentrating on after sale service and we're launching new models very soon. Everything 60s styles? Yes, of course. A warm round of applause for Valeria, who comes from Costa Rica and uh, wanted to stay in Bilbao. Thank you very much. Uh, you can have a look at the picture of uh, the motorcycles she makes. Let's move on to the third project concerning infrastructure. This is an innovative project by Adrián Heredia from Madrid. Adrián, the floor is all yours. Thank you, Antonella. Good afternoon to you all. My name is Adrián Heredia. I'm here to talk about Watson. This is a, uh, well, um, the electric vehicles uh, lack chargers, and the users uh, need flexibility. As a consequence of this, what happens is that uh, the demand and the development of electric mobility is not moving forward as fast as we would like it to. This is why we developed Watson, an electric vehicle mobile uh, charging system. We have a mobile unit that we uh, charge that has 200 kilowatts of power, and we can take the infrastructure wherever it is needed. We provide uh, 
end users with services and uh, uh, events, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So we have uh, charges, and we place our charges wherever needed. We were created in 2020. Uh, by a company that is aimed at creating uh, new uh, companies and also by Tiberica. Okay, you have a mobile uh, charging uh, service here. And why did you collaborate with uh, Porsche? Well, they promoted the project from day one. Porsche have uh, supported us from the very beginning and have contributed with their know-how. We have a partnership with Porsche Germany at a technology level. We work with them hand in hand and with techni their technicians so that we can use their batteries and use them up for this project. Uh, Porsche's ambition in Spain is about developing their uh, charging technology. And uh, it is very clear to us that uh, it's going to be working. So how are you going to be making money? Well, it depends on the type of customer. Watson provides services both for end users and companies or events. For end users, this is uh, a direct service. And uh, as for companies having their own fleet, we are thinking about subscription uh, models depending on the number of uh, times that they charge their uh, vehicles a month. And then for events, we have a fee that depends on the uh, uh, rental of the charging unit and the operator. Thank you very much, Adrian, for this presentation. Now we're going to be hearing uh, about a project that uh, enables us to use the energy when it is um, the uh, cheapest. Uh, this is a project by Roby Moyano from Via Power Grid Barcelona. Roby, the floor is all yours. Let me uh, ask you uh, not to move very much in the room, OK? because it's not easy to uh, keep the distance and the concentration. Thank you very much. Robbie, the floor is all yours. Thank you. Good afternoon. At uh, Bayer Power, we know that the electric vehicle is key for a more sustainable mobility. Nevertheless, electric uh, cars are just as clean as the energy uh, they use, uh, and they have this uh, high com carbon footprint. If we add to this that electricity is more and more expensive, well, things get more difficult difficult. So at Bayer Power, we have developed a, a smart charging platform that uses um, artificial intelligence to know the, uh, dis the device that's being charged and uh, the grid as well. It promotes charging when electricity is cheapest. And uh, where are you um, in this project? We have already developed and marketed this uh, project. We are leaders in the Spanish market, and companies like Acciona, Aguas de Barcelona, Transportes Metropolitanos de Barcelona use our solutions to accelerate the transition towards a 100% electric mobility. What's the roadmap? What's the next step? Well, the platform we've uh, developed uh, will uh, develop uh, and deploy its full potential if we are able to uh, help the operators of the electric uh, grid to integrate renewables in a more efficient and uh, in a more economic uh, way, in a cheaper way, we'll be able to provide our current customers to uh, a possibility to generate more income. Well, very inspiring. Roby, thank you. Thank you so much. Penultimo. La base. Let's now look at something essential for any project, road safety. How to make roads safer in a more efficient way. This innovative technology allows to increase both efficiency and safety. It will be presented by Estivaliz Baraño from Asimov Bilbao. Estivaliz, the floor is all yours. Thank you very much, Antonella. 
good signage reduces the number of accidents on the road. And this is especially important in the secondary road uh, network where the most uh, or the highest uh, number of casualties occur. Currently, the maintenance uh, um, expert moves uh, from in the roads and inspects them manually. So our technology can be installed in the inspection vehicles and gathers images about the road. These images are there analyzed with our um, artificial intelligence models. All the signs are analyzed and the good visibility of uh, the lines is analyzed. So the signs are always perfect. As, as in MOV, we support road maintenance teams for them to offer the safest possible roads for drivers and autonomous vehicles that will be driven in the future. Have you tested it yet? Yes, we've carried out some uh, pilots, one of them in Ibuthqua, by the way, and uh, they have enabled us uh, to develop a better interface so that information gets better to users very intuitively and so that it can help uh, the maintenance teams in their uh, daily work. What do you need to uh, go to the next step? Well, we need to be known, the field, the administrations and the uh, maintenance companies need to know that this technology is available, a technology that can automate very hard tasks and that can help them to optimize the resources. Thank you, thank you very much. This is a first uh, step towards notoriety. Thank you very much. Ultimo. And last but not least, we're going to be speaking about autonomous cars, which are no longer an abstract future. But they're already here. Oyana Ataegul from Proven, Gipuzkoa, works for them to get to us as soon as possible. She's been carrying out some research in Germany, but she decided to come back to the Basque Country. Lucky for us. Oyana, the floor is all yours. Thank you, Antonella. Teaching a car to support a driver or to drive or be driven autonomously it is a very complex, long, and uh, expensive task. It can take seven years and cost hundreds of thousands of uh, euros. The longest and de most delicate task is gathering millions of images coming from sensors. They need to be noted down manually to teach a car so that the car can see a lane, a sign, a pedestrian, a car, so that it can extract the next uh, possible movements of these elements. Proven provides a, an artificial intelligence-based platform for optimizing validation processes for assisted and or autonomous driving functions. So humans will only be there in the validation uh, stage. So assisted and or autonomous cars will be safer this way. The manufacturing process will be cheaper and they will get faster to the market. And where's your, what's your market? Well, our market will be the companies that uh, provide sensors, systems, and solutions to uh, car manufacturers, and also car manufacturers themselves to validate all the systems they integrate into their vehicles. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Oyana, one more question. Have you tested it? Have you proven how much money you can save, how much time you can save? Go ahead. Well, we have a minimum uh, viable product that we have managed to get and uh, that uh, has been used by a company that provides uh, systems to car manufacturers. We're now measuring uh, the first uh, savings that amount to 70% in terms of time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Oyana. Thanks to all the finalists. This was the summary of their project. Well, among them, we have two winners. Let's uh, now speak about the panel and the members of the panel. I can see here 
two um, envelopes with uh, the numbers one and two on them. Let me invite Javier Hernandez, spokesperson of the panel and a great expert on all the issues that concerns us today. Let me keep the distance. Javier, you're an expert on all these matters. What's your impression about this group of people? Well, I would highlight two things here, Antonella, and uh, I believe that um, the rest of the members of the panel will agree with me. Let me first of all uh, say and acknowledge the high level of all the projects and finalists, and probably of the remaining 22 projects that were submitted and are not here. Um, let, let's not forget that this is the first edition of the Mobile Mobility Awards. This is like, uh, well, uh, an experiment for us, and uh, we never expected such a, a high quality level in the projects. And I would also highlight the scope of the projects. When uh, we first heard about mobility, we, th we said, OK, maybe we're just concentrating on the electric cars here. But we've actually seen that there are many different uh, projects here. Uh, we've got platforms, we've got components, materials. And I believe this uh, adds up to a very uh, rich ecosystem. Probably the pandemic has to do with this uh, because, uh, well, uh, we need to admit that uh, um, the concept of mobility is something we've uh, given a thought to over the past year and a half. That's quite clear to me. Um, in the past, well, uh, we would uh, not think so much about mobility, and we are now thinking of mobility in a very different way. And this has helped our participants, uh, I believe, uh, this has helped them to develop wonderful projects. Well, there were some requirements they, have, they had to fulfill, um, but what, what was your focus on? I mean, what was most important to you as a panel? Well. Uh, there wasn't just one single thing. Um, we believe that we've shortlisted these uh, six finalists. It was hard to come to an agreement, I need to admit. Well, yes, of course, uh, I believe this was so. But I believe there were a number of different uh, criteria that we applied. Uh, uh, we took into consideration the added value, the solutions, uh, to solve the problem of mobility, uh, the team, the potential for the future. And let's not forget that uh, we're now uh, talking about mobile as an umbrella uh, for all these projects. The idea of mobile is to uh, lever all the projects. And I'm sure that the winners will be able to make the most of everything we can offer. Thank you very much for the, the envelope. Thanks. Gracias. But before I, I open the envelopes, let me remind you, especially those of you who are following uh, from home, uh, let me say what the winners will get. Well, uh, first of all, they will get 10,000 and 25,000 euros, respectively, and also the rental of an office for a year. And there's also another possibility. They will... Uh, be exhibitors at the Go Mobility uh, exhibition that will be held in March in 2022 in Gipuzkoa. But most importantly, these two projects, the two winners, will be integrated into the mobile ecosystem. We've tried to summarize in a picture what uh, this can be interpreted or how it can be interpreted. Let's have a look at this picture. Let's have a look at the mobile ecosystem, a very dense and complex ecosystem made up by all these elements you see up on the screen that are interconnected and intertwined. The two companies, the two winners, will be integrated into this ecosystem for a year so that their project is fostered, regardless of the level of development of the project, right? But Let's now 
open the first envelope with a second uh, prize. Let me call Aranta Tapia, Councillor for Economic Development, Sustainability and the Environment of uh, the Basque Government. <laughs> Thank you very much, Councillor, for being here. It is an honor for us to have you here. I will hand this envelope to you, or not the envelope, the award itself. This is for the second, right? The second prize, the second award goes to Watson. Moving. Mobile service to charge electric vehicles. A picture, please. Adrian, there you are. You're ready to be integrated into the mobile ecosystem. All these companies in the ecosystem will support your project. Are we done with the pictures? Thank you. Thank you so much. I will ask you later on to come back and join me up on the stage. Para la entrega. Let's now present the first prize. Please, Markel Olano, Deputy General of Guipúzcoa. Can you join me up on, this, on the stage? Let me give you the award so that you can present it to the winner. And let me open this envelope. Oh, I'm nervous. So am I. And the, and the winner is Echo Magnet Sustainable Powder for Magnets by Kenny Alvarez. Congratulations, Kenny. Let's uh, take some time for pictures. Ya está. Enhorabuena. Congratulations for your project that uh, will foster circular economy. Bravo. Can I get some stools, please? Because I would like to have 10, 15 minutes for the audience to be able to have a Q&A session uh, with the winners. Kenny, Adrian, I'm going to be asking you to come back up on the stage, please. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you, thank you very much. You heard them for a minute. I know uh, it's not much. Please, Adriana, Kenny, a warm round of applause for them. Please take a seat. We could only hear you for a minute. Can we take a leap and think uh, that we are a year from now and see? how your projects benefited from the mobile ecosystem. But let's start from the present. The winners are available to you all. Are there any questions that you would like to ask them about their proposal, their company, so that the people that are following this event online can get additional information about them? Can we get some mics, please? Are they ready? Wonderful. Thank you. Who wants to break the ice? Ay, muchísimas gracias. Thank you, thank you very much. A mic over here, please. La... My question is for both of them. What's the main challenges you think you'll be facing in the short term? And how are you going to be integrating your companies and projects in the mobile ecosystem? Adrián? Our main challenge will be, or is related to technology and hardware, because this is a project where prototyping is very expensive. So funding this operation is going to be a challenge. And making the most uh, of uh, the existing resources will be a challenge as well. How are we going to be integrated into the ecosystem? I don't know. We'll talk about that tomorrow, I guess, uh, in our case. As we were saying earlier on, there are some uh, existing, uh, well, there are connection points 
between the project and the business model and the access to the whole network of the ecosystem is going to be very beneficial for the project, I guess. Let me first of all thank you for this opportunity of uh, integrating my project into your ecosystem. I think that the main challenge in the short and mid-term will be designing a plant. We're talking about a disruptive technology that doesn't exist in the market as of now. So we need a layout design and we need to uh, buy uh, industrial equipment for powder production. So we need to design the facility and we need to optimize the, uh, the process. As for the mobile ecosystem, um, I think it's going to be very possible, possible. Uh, sorry, positive for us because this is a startup. I am a, a, an engineer, scientist myself, so it's good for me to uh, to be in touch with companies, potential suppliers, so that the product is uh, better known and we can find investors for the future. Are there more questions for the winners? Go ahead. Don't be shy. Are there any questions from the floor? No more questions? Nobody? Yes, there's a question over here. Can we get a mic, please? Thank you for your question. Go ahead. Hello, good afternoon. My question is uh, mainly for Adrian. I understand that your startup was created in Madrid. I would like to know uh, why you submitted your uh, project to this uh, project call. Well, we were talking about that this morning, precisely. Um, when we thought about electric mobility uh, in Madrid, well, we realized there, there, there was some space in Valencia with uh, uh, some industry there and also in the Basque Country. So um, when it comes to developing a technology that is non-existent, and for which we're going to be needing not just uh, the industrial fabric, but also talent and knowledge, we thought, well, um, the Basque Country is our best possible option. And I believe that that's going to be positive for us, being part of this ecosystem. There's one more question from the floor. Thank you very much. Go ahead. Yes, first of all, congratulations to both winners. I would like to ask, Kenny, from Echo Magnet, um, what are the fields or the companies that would be interesting to you as customers and suppliers? Well, first of all, raw material suppliers will be mainly companies that manage all type of industrial waste, that gather electric, electronic uh, waste. And it could also be electric uh, engines or permanent uh, magnet manufacturers because they also have magnets, wasted magnets that we can uh, use. So we could get our raw material from uh, that waste. Uh, currently, those companies don't know what to do with them. Uh, as for customers, we're mainly thinking of uh, manufacturers, uh, permanent magnet manufacturers, both at a national and international level, electric engine manufacturers that want to make their own uh, permanent magnets uh, and component uh, ma manufacturers. And there are many of them in the uh, Basque Country, uh, many companies that make components for the fields that uh, uh, in the future will uh, have this new opportunity to manufacture permanent magnets using the powder we're going to be making. Are there any further questions for Kenny or for Adrian? Maybe one more question from the floor. There aren't any more questions, but I can see here in white Sonia Fernandez partner at Kivo Ventures, a hedge fund in Madrid and Barcelona, uh, also Lisbon and Galicia. They invest at a, a, a global level in digital-based companies that are undergoing an expansion phase. 
and um, they prepare them for the next round of uh, financing. So would you invest your uh, funds in these two projects or not? I would like to ask you, Sonia, maybe a stool for her as well? Is there room for four here up on the stage? A warm round of applause for Sonia, please. Gracias, so Thank you very much, Sonia. Sonia, uh, she's got a great experience, a very broad experience. Uh, she's supervisor BP car subscription service that was sold to Renault in July for 100 million euros. Um, so we're going to make the most of the fact that you're here. Can you share your impressions with us? about the, the entrepreneurs you met this afternoon here? Honestly, well, um, I'm very happily her, listened to the, the one-minute pitches we've ha had here, and I would like to congratulate you all. I think that the field of m sustainable mobility is unstoppable. There is a, a great deal of interest to fund this type, this type of projects, and there are many projects being developed in Spain. So congratulations, first of all. What are investors looking for when it comes to deciding where to invest? What should we do here to foster um, or to attract uh, private equity? Well, it's important to generate um, uh, precisely this morning I was visiting uh, mobile facilities, and I liked very much what I saw because creating ecosystems is essential. We are a private fund that supports uh, financing, but of course, uh, we also retrofit the system uh, through knowledge and access to resources, and all the resources that mobile has uh, available for companies uh, uh, that are working on R&D is fundamental so that they don't leave, they don't go elsewhere, so that that effort stays here in Gibuthqua. So in that sense, I believe it's essential that we are capable of being uh, at hubs that attract funding by joining forces like uh, Mobile does, attracting talent from universities. So for us, we, we invest at an early stage. Uh, we invest two to five million uh, in projects. So it's important for you to be able to attract talent from the very beginning. So in that sense, having access to engineers, uh, researchers is great. I heard, I, I love to hear from this researcher from Germany, attracting talent is fundamental. I would say that that's one of the main things here. Well, a piece of advice for Kenny and Adrian, please. Well, I think we need to know very well what the needs uh, of the market are. Sometimes we develop projects that are ahead of their time because we don't have that product market fit. So we've got a, a product and there is a need. Here we are in a field where there's a very clear need in both cases uh, for both projects. So once you know that you have a product that fits the market, you need to know very well what the, your business model is going to be. And you also need to be able to see how you, you, you're you going to be able to escalate your project in the future. The investors need to see who will be coming in the future into this project uh, so that you need, so you need that clear vision of how you're going to be growing to escalate your projects and what are the levers there. So the sooner you know about that, the better. Does anybody want to ask Sonia any questions at all? Any questions for her? She works as an investor at um, uh, Kibo. Well, and I have a question. Are we at the peak? Um, is it uh, is there a momentum here? Does the market believe that you need to invest here? Well, I believe there are many success stories. Ogro is a micro mobility company in Asia that uh, is now listed. Uh, it's worth two point five billion dollars, and it proves that 
there is a great interest in mobility, sustainability by governments all over the world and by many, many companies um, that are becoming very large companies and work on micro mobility, batteries. So you work in a field that is growing very much. And it, it, this is not just about the future, it's, it's, it's about the present. So you need uh, financing. Your projects need funding. So you need to f find your niche. And in this case, investors like us, general investors like us, are also committed to mobility. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Sonia. We can talk over dinner about this. Thank you, Kenny. Thank you, Adrian. Let's now close this ceremony. We'll take away the stools from the stage. Mobile is part of an institutional effort that is larger. Etorkisuna Eraikis. Building the Future is an initiative that aims at promoting sustainable development in this territory. For this reason, we're going to close this event uh, listening to Marke Lolano, Deputy General of Gibufqua, who is going to close this event and who, together with his team, promoted the Mobile Project, fostered this award and also had a vision of leadership with an international projection. Mr. Deputy General, the floor is all yours. Thank you very much. Good afternoon to you all. Let me start by saying that it's been a pleasure listening to all the finalists, knowing more about the projects, and obviously listening to the winners. I believe that you will make a very important contribution to this unstoppable process, that is the transformation of mobility globally and in the territory of Gipuzkoa as well. Let me just um, share one main idea with you. I was thinking what I could say very briefly here today. And I need to state that this commitment of ours uh, is a commitment to our industry. If we are to survive, we will need industry. Otherwise, it won't be possible to grow and survive because we've always been, we still are, and we will always be an industrial-based territory. Some years ago, at the provincial government, we were thinking, well, what will be our commitment in the territory for the future? And this was a starting point of mobile because we were convinced that our territory has this capability of developing mobility further. But for this, it is essential for us to work in partnership. The territory of Gipuzkoa is mainly an industrial territory. Well, this was, the, as I said, the starting point of mobile. Um, our ambition is to tackle the future in a collaborative way from this perspective of public and private partnership so that Gipuzkoa becomes a reference of the new mobility. And at first we felt a little bit afraid of the process because if we didn't make things right, we said, oh, well, it's going to be hard to keep being leaders in the territory. But uh, there is this message of trust that is uh, transmitted here. We trust our technology centers, our universities, our SMEs, and the driving companies in the territory. This is a message of institutional trust because together we will make it. We will be a reference, internationally speaking, a reference of a new mobility. This is our ambition. We are ambitious because we believe this leap is fundamental. It's a leap we need to take. As you know, we have Olat, the mayor of Tolosa. Here, uh, Mobile is located at Usabal in Tolosa. And um, 
I say this is a very ambitious project because we're thinking about the next step, the next leap. The idea is to expand this platform to the main industrial area of Guipúzcoa. We've already purchased some square kilometers uh, there, some plots, and we have uh, 48,000 square meters available for the new mobile infrastructure. So we're moving from Tolosa to a larger space. And we also count on the dynamism and the capability of the driving companies and of the startups that we've um, met today that are being created and that are going to be fostering this industrial transformation that we'll be undergoing in the near future. That's all from me. Um, we are very motivated, we are determined, we are being ambitious, and we remind you that together we can make it. We believe this is an important step forward. Thank you very much for your attention. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Deputy General. Thank you, uh, all the members of the audience. I would like to also thank the finalists and the winners. Thanks to you all who followed us on streaming. We encourage you to follow us on the social media and join our newsletter where we're going to be explaining and telling you more about the evolution of these two projects uh, next year once they uh, work in an integrated way into this ecosystem. This